We never know the joys, surprises, and challenges life will bring. Many of, of us here are drawn together because we know a person who has a chronic illness and are trying to learn as much as possible about treatment options. This is certainly our case as my husband Scott and I are trying to educate ourselves about his options for a new kidney, and we, along with you, will be listening to what each of the speakers have to say today. My husband Scott, who became a Donate Life Ambassador to increase our community's awareness of the importance of being an organ donor, will introduce our speakers. Scott? Now I'd like to introduce uh, Dr. Lori Wood. Uh, she's going to be talking about the medical evaluations patients uh, undergo in uh, talking on kidneys. Thank you, Dr. and I'll just be talking to you a little bit about the process that people interested in donating a kidney can expect to undergo uh, right up through the surgery and the recovery process. Okay, so last week, according to UNOS, or United Network for Organ Sharing, their online data tells us that over 127,000 people nationally are waiting for organ transplants. Over 100,000 of these patients are waiting specifically for a kidney transplant. And most people, as Ann mentioned, wait several years for a kidney transplant. Approximately five to 6,000 of these transplants are made possible every year by living kidney donation. And thus far, over 117,000 living kidney uh, nephrectomies have been performed. So I want to talk a little bit about how you can donate a kidney. So there's a few ways, and uh, one of the speakers touched on this already. You can do a directed donation, which is when you have a specific recipient in mind and you want to help that particular person in need. You can also do a, an altruistic or non-directed donation where you just say, I want to give my kidney and whoever is able to take it can be the intended recipient. Or you can do a paired donation or a chain, which was already explained earlier. And why, why donate a kidney? Primarily, it keeps patients off of dialysis. And dialysis is not a benign thing. It's a temporary solution. It's not permanent and it can actually cause a lot of harm as well. And so it essentially saves a life. But the most important reason to do it is because you want to. You should never feel pressure from anyone else, a family member or a friend. It has to be you know, for the right reasons. So who's el eligible to donate? Well, in general, we prefer the patients to be healthy. Um, we also need patients who are motivated and um, inspired by themselves and, again, make the decision on their own. We say 18 to 75, however, if the donor does not know the recipient, we actually ask that they be at least 21 years of age. We also ask questions about their medical history. So patients with high blood pressure or diabetes are often not eligible to donate because we don't want the, to pose any risk to the kidney donors that's not necessary. Um, as a urologist, we also will ask about urologic and kidney, other kidney disease, kidney stones, etc. All this is kind of taken in as a case-by-case -case basis. We'll also ask about your family history. So if you have a lot of grandparents, parents, etc. with high blood pressure, diabetes, we consider that as well. And you use height and weight to calculate fast, uh, body mass index. So if you're overweight or obese, sometimes we ask you to lose weight prior to the surgery to make it safer for you and for the recipient. So if you are interested in becoming a kidney donor, the first thing to do uh, would be to complete a health questionnaire that will address a lot of the issues that I just spoke about. You'll have three blood pressure measurements taken. You want to make sure that your blood pressure is within the normal range. And after that, you'll meet with a urologist or a transplant surgeon who would actually be doing the uh, removal of the kidney, a nephrologist or a medical kidney doctor, and a financial coordinator and uh, nurse coordinator, in addition to a social worker called an independent donor advocate, and if necessary, a psychiatrist, although that's not always the case. So the independent donor advocate is someone who is not related to the recipient transplant team in any way, and their role is really to advocate for the donor's rights. So if there's any questions about the consent or the surgery or their responsibilities, the independent donor advocate is really your go-to person to make sure that all of your needs are being met and that you're being treated fairly throughout the process. 
so how do you know if you're a suitable donor? Well, we'll tell you. So the first things that we'll do is simple blood tests um, to evaluate your kidney function. In addition, we'll do a CT scan. And the reason we do this is to make sure that you have two normal kidneys and to look at the anatomy to make sure that there's you know, only one artery and one vein. In general, we take the left kidney because the blood vessels are longer and it's a, an easier technical procedure from a surgical standpoint, but we are willing to take either one in special circumstances. Once patients have been fully evaluated medically and uh, psychologically, an independent donor selection, can, selection committee meets and we discuss each patient on a case-by-case -case basis. Then one week prior to surgery, both the donor and the recipient will come for a visit and then um, we take the kidney out. So it's important to know that donors are not responsible for their costs, however, they cannot be paid for the surgery directly. So there's no financial reimbursement. However, um, as I mentioned, there are plenty of ways that they travel, et cetera. So before you donate a kidney, it's really important to discuss the idea with your family. You know, there is a recovery process for you. It is a surgery. So you want to make sure that you have uh, adequate health at home, that it's okay if you take time from work. And something to consider is, although you're a healthy donor, your insurance company may consider it a pre-existing condition after you donate a kidney. So it's important to take all of these things into consideration before making such a large decision. So on the day of surgery, you'll arrive, uh, meet the nurses and anesthesiologists and the remainder of the team you may not have met during the evaluation process. Um, monitors are attached, IVs inserted, and you're taken to the operating room. And this is a photo of uh, two, myself and another surgeon doing a live donor nephrectomy. So historically, donor nephrectomies were done with a big incision in the flank. And this was an incision that cut through muscle, it was very painful, patients stayed in the hospital for days and days after surgery, it was, it was a big process. Uh, and this was done until about the mid to late 1990s. However, nowadays, we're able to do this through tiny keyhole incisions, and so we're using a minimally invasive approach. There's also an option called a hand assist donor nephrectomy, where the actual site the kidney comes out is here in the midline, but the surgery is still done through tiny keyholes. And so this is a schematic we show all the patients who come in to be evaluated for donor nephrectomies. Your incisions would be very tiny and located here, and although we can mobilize the kidney and get it ready to come out through this, uh, these type of incisions, it does have to come out through a larger incision, unfortunately. Um, but we're able to do this in a bikini-type incision, and if a woman has had a C-section, you can go through the old scar, and so generally, patients don't even notice it, and you can't see it outside of the clothes. So the benefits of using this approach are that patients have much better pain control. There's no cutting of the muscles, um, the incisions are smaller, and we use a natural gap to be able to take the kidney out. As I mentioned, the incision is a bikini-type, and we can use an old scar for a patient had a C-section. And we do, at least at Sears Island, we do a plastic surgery type closure so that all the sutures dissolve and there's no staples. So the night of the procedure, uh, you can expect to be drinking liquids, walking around, and your pain is controlled with pills and IV medication. And it seems that the donors receive a deluxe liquid tray, which I believe is the same broth, although it comes in China. So they really enjoy that, though. <laughs> On the first day after surgery, the team will come and take your bandages off. There's a catheter in your bladder that's removed, and um, you generally advance your diet to soft or solid food. And as I mentioned, the sutures dissolve on their own, and most people go home the day after surgery, which is a huge advantage from the prior, prior years when we have to make the big incision. So it's perfectly safe to live with one kidney, as we know recipients only have one kidney, and, and they do just great with those. Um, we have you come back to see us about two weeks after just to make sure your incisions are healing well and the recovery process is going fine, getting back to your normal activities. And then the transplant clinic will actually keep in touch with you at six months, one year, and two years. Um, we also ask that you see your regular doctor on an annual basis just to make sure that your blood pressure and other, and other vital signs are normal and that you're healthy. Actually, there have been studies that show that people who donate a kidney live longer than and those who don't, it may just be attributed to this close follow-up because we, we know that you did such a wonderful thing and really want to make sure that your safety is the number one priority and that you do very well throughout the recovery process. Uh, so I'm happy to take any questions. And if anyone is interested, uh, specifically becoming a kidney donor at Cedar sinai if your last name begins with A through K, you call Jessica at this number or Enrique at this number for L through Z. Um, as one of the speakers already mentioned, donatelife.net is how you can sign up to be an 
organ donor, a deceased organ donor right now. Um, United Network for Organ Sharing is a fantastic resource, also has a lot of facts. If you're interested, they have a great website, and livingdonorsonline.org is another resource. Thank you very much.